When you unpack your clock, you'll find the trunk, the hood, the movement, the weights, the pendulum, and the winding key. How you assemble the clock is as follows. It's very, very simple. This is what you do. Take the movement. Centralise the movement in the hood, left and right, and make sure that it comes as far forward in the hood as it, as it can. Having centralised it in the case, you then take the hood off. And you hang the pendulum on. This is where the film producer has to come round to the side. What we do next is to put the suspension spring through the crutch and into the slit at the top of the back cock at the top there. So it just settles like that. Uh, it's very, very easy to do. The next thing we do is to put the weights on. Okay, we lower the weight in like that. The left hand side is the striking and the right hand side is the going. With the hood still off, we wind the clock up. It doesn't matter if you do the left hand one first or the right hand one first, but what you must do is watch the gut line go into the groove with the winding barrel. So if you can come round to the side, you can see that the gut lines have gone onto the grooves of the winding barrel. And if you come back round to this side, you can watch the gut lines go on. It's important that they go on go into the grooves. And you just wind until the weights are right up to the top. Uh, the next thing you do is to swing the pendulum and you'll notice the second hand starts to go round. Uh, setting the date, very simple. We're on the 29th at the moment. You just move it round with your fingers. 5, 26, 27, 28. 29 there. Uh, the moon phase for May the 29th. The new moon is on the 16th of May and we're now on the 29th so 16 from 29 is 13 so we're adding 13 to the new moon. The new moon is no moon at all and it advances every 12 hours automatically. So at the moment we will be on 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, to set the time it's always best to operate from it's always best to operate from the center rather than move the hands you uh, the minute hand using the, the tip of the hand like this, it's always better to come from the center. 
You need not like. You need not allow. You need not allow the clock to strike out on every o'clock. But when you reach 12 o'clock, if you need to go, you must always let it strike out fully at 12 o'clock. Uh, it's now about there. We will set it up accurately using a radio control clock. It's about half a second fast and it's as simple as that if for security reasons um, you would like it screwed to the wall it's best to take the penny washer which I will provide in the kit uh, a, a, a screw which will go through the penny washer through the backboard if you have skirting boards, what we call skirting boards in England, or what the Americans, North Americans call trim, you'll need a batten to go across the back of the clock about the thickness of the skirting board. Uh, so there you go through the penny washer, through the backboard, through the batten to pack it out from the wall, and then put it into a raw plug into the wall, which will all be provided in the, uh, in the kit. It really is as simple as that. Um, oiling, if you can come round, oiling using the uh, using the bent paper clip provided. Oiling is done where the steel pivots come through the back plate and through the front plate. Sometimes it's easier to get to the uh, the pivot points from inside the movement, and sometimes it's easier from outside. Uh, the oiling points are always where the steel goes through the brass. You don't put oil on the teeth at all. You put one spot on everywhere except the winding barrels, which being much bigger, take two spots. So it's two spots there, two spots there, and the same on the winding barrel on the other side, and then one spot everywhere else. Also put a spot where the brass suspension block goes through the steel crutch. One spot on this side and one spot on the other. It really is as simple as that. If, when you're adjusting the moon phases, if for any reason the moon phase won't move or if the date won't move when you try and move it with your fingers, this means that it's in operation and the mechanism is doing it automatically. It really is as simple as that. Most importantly, on all the clocks that I supply, my telephone number is always on the inside of the trunk door. So if you do get stuck or you need clarification on any point, just give me a call and I'll talk you through the setting up. It's that easy. Finally, because these clocks are done to the exact, because these clocks are restored to exacting tolerances, you should get a minute a week accuracy out of them. Minute to a minute and a half is okay. If you fuss over them, you can get better than a minute accuracy per week. When you wind them up, uh, try and wind them up at the same time, say after dinner on Sunday, so you get into the habit of doing it. And always correct any errors uh, using a really accurate time uh, uh, radio control clock or something which is really, really accurate, so that when you wind it up, any slight variations can be uh, adjusted, uh, taken out. For instance, if the clock is fast, 
the rating nut at the bottom of the pendulum should go to the left. Thumb to the left makes the clock slow down, thumb to the right makes the clock speed up. Effectively you're shortening the pendulum to speed the clock up and lengthening it to slow the clock down. Uh, the rating nut is that little thing right on the bottom of the pendulum there. Get a picture of that. Uh, all very simple. And most of these clocks have been around that, that I deal with have been around since the 18th century and they've survived this far. So uh, with a little bit of help they'll, they'll last another 200 years. That's it.